Hello everybody and welcome to One Player Today on the table. Well, we couldn't stay away for too long, could we? This is an entry from the 2020 BGG Print and Play Solitaire Design Contest, but this is one that I have not played, and this is the one that I wanted to play because I did cast a vote for it. I can't remember in which category, um, but I, I remember watching Chrissy's playthrough and saying, seeing that it was very good. Um, I am a massive fan of Sudoku and pencil puzzles. I'm also a large fan of dungeons and crawling them. So this is a nice... Mm, just smush together of those. We've got a little Sudoku kind of number puzzle dice rolling dungeon. You've got like wandering monsters over here. We've got random encounters. We've got tables. I mean, not big tables, but just tables nonetheless to roll against. And uh, and some nice dice manipulation too. So this kind of checks all the boxes. Um, no pun intended. Well, I guess there's not really a pun in there. This does kind of check all the boxes of, a, of what I want from a PNP. Again, I've gone um, very cheapskate and printed out the uh, black and white version because that's what my printer is capable of. But there is a nice, lovely uh, color version and that is available that I uh, highly recommend giving a, giving a look. I believe the files are still up on the contest, so I'll link them down below so you can go play this yourself. Um, we've also got a handy, we've got three dice to roll and we've got our handy three-way dice tower. Um, very dungeony, so I'm happy about that. That's going to go up to the right here. And um, and yeah, we're going to get started, essentially. We are rolling numbers to fill rooms. Um, basically, they, they, they denote our steps through the dungeon. And our goal is to get to both treasures. As you can see, they are conveniently placed at exactly opposite ends of the dungeon. Now, each room follows a specific rule set, which is that going from south to north, if you will, going from bottom to top, we have to place ascending digits. There can also not be any matching digits in the row. So for example, enter the example page, I could place a one, two, three quite comfortably. I could also place a four, five, six quite comfortably. I could also place a a four and a six but then this leaves me with a problem because I can't place anything higher than a six and if I wanted to place even if this was a five which it couldn't be I couldn't then make this a six because we've got matching in the rows so yeah you see the Sudoku element you can have the same numbers in a room so for example I could theoretically do like something like two three four one two three and three four five However, I don't necessarily always want to fill the room because each room, based on this little pattern here, again, based on the color on the actual color version, but based on the pattern here, has a, has a specific total that we want to avoid, um, or I should say we want to avoid going over. If we get the exact total, then that's nice. It gives us a point at the end, but I'm going into a bit too much detail. Let's just start rolling and we'll get to it. We've got various locked doors throughout the dungeon. Uh, one, two, three, four to be exact. Luckily we have one, two, three, four matching keys with which to open those doors. So we obviously need to collect the keys before we go through the door. Um, these symbols mean we're gonna have to go up in value. These symbols mean we need to go down in value. And uh, yeah, that's it. First roll, and it's a double. Wow, that's a nice thing that I didn't explain. And we'll have to now. I'm going to place the one and we have to place it on the start. So um, I've been playing around with pen colors for this. I hope you can see that. And hopefully when we draw, start drawing over the symbols, it'll still be visible. But that's a number one. We've rolled a one. But now we've got a double. And we could theoretically place two sixes in this. Although that doesn't sound like a good idea at all because it's going to block us if we put it there. And if we put it there, we can't put any numbers um, left. So luckily what we can do when we get a double is actually on the wandering monster chart here. If we roll a one, two, three, four, five, or a six double, we can cross off one of these monster boxes. Now we've we've basically encountered a troll brute. We've smashed his head in, and now we're one out of three steps away from getting the sword of vigor, which gives us a special ability. So very nice. If we roll two more double sixes in the game, we get ourselves a nice sword. So let's uh, let's aim for that, I suppose. We've also got skulls in case we cannot uh, place a number, um, and we've got one of each of these, so not very lenient, but one of each of these manipulations. Reroll any dice, plus or minus one, and then use one of these a second time. So literally, like, we're very limited in terms of in terms of what we can do. 
However, this is about the most perfect roll I think I could possibly have got. Because what I'm going to do is place two here, three here. Again, I'm, I'm a bit worried you can't see that, but hopefully you can. And then a six in there. That six is going to give us a key, so we're going to shade in a nice key to show that we have it. And this three is going to be our random encounter. What we do then is I'll put this I'll put the chart up on the screen somewhere. We're going to roll one d6. I'm going to add it to the number we placed in the random encounter space. So that's a three plus a three, and we are oh we get a skeleton key. That's fantastic. And there's some nice flavor text in here, so I will read it. While walking through the dungeon room, you nearly stub your toe on a hard object lodged into a crack in the floor. You pry the object from its crevasse and see that it is a rusted key, likely dropped long ago by an unfortunate adventurer. Collect a key that can be used to open a door. Well, that is brilliant, because that means we don't have to go get this one or this one. Um, or this one, I suppose. But uh, this is probably the hardest that I've found to get. So we don't have to go all the way up to the top of this room and then all the way back down again. We can just skip around straight to this door. So that's brilliant. And I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy about that. All right. We should also keep an eye on the room total because we've got nine. We've got 12 in here. We want to get to 18, but we don't want to get over 18. Of course, if we are in another room and we want to place a number, but we can't, we can backtrack and put them somewhere else, but again, only if they follow the placement rules uh, previously discussed. We've got a two, three, and a five, and you know what that will do, because we're gonna go two in this corridor, three in that, and five here, and we are into the next room. Again, these have to be ascending, these have to be descending, which I know it, it makes a, it doesn't make as much sense because this would kind of technically mean like more than in a math symbol, or at least that's how I would read it. So like two being more than three, but that's the, them's the rules, okay? I don't make them. I just play by them sometimes. Oh, a double six. I love that. Troll Brute. You, you, another one. So uh, Troll Brute, two out of three. And uh, if you'd fill in more than one skull on your turn, fill in only one instead. Okay, I could, I could get down on that. Um, luckily, we haven't got any skulls yet, but we've entered this room. Um, oh, and I should say we've still got to place a one, haven't we? Um, which is a perfect number to place because we're right at the bottom. So I'm going to place a one there, and then now we've got a choice, haven't we? Because we've got two keys, so I could make it into this room. Um, up this corridor with three non-equal numbers. Um, I also like the thought of starting this and kind of like not leaving this to the end if that makes sense because having to roll three equal numbers is quite difficult um, or at least with my luck it is so i think i'm going to actually kind of do both at once if that makes sense um although wait no i won't be able to do that because i'll need two keys and then i won't be able to get through this so i will need to go here as well hmm. all right uh let's just let's just roll and see what happens it's a double one and a six um, that's not brilliant, but it's okay, because we can do six on the random encounter, I guess. Again, we don't want to put a six here, because we won't be able to get to the door. Similarly here, we won't be able to get to the door, because we can't place anything above it, because nothing is higher than a six on a six-sided dice. Um, you say you don't learn anything when you come to watch one player? There you go. We've got a double one, so that does actually allow us to cross off a plague rat. Um, boots of celerity. When you roll doubles, you may re-roll one of the dice before writing numbers. I wonder if you still get to roll off, cross off the monster with the double two. That would be nice. Um, we're going to play six on here, and we've got ourselves another random encounter. So let's roll one dice. It's a one, and we're on a seven. That is a ley line of power. You suddenly feel a surge of magical energy flow through your body. Oh, hold on. I've got something for that. You suddenly feel a surge of magical energy flow through your body. That was pretty good, wasn't it? You realize you're stand. I just broke the fourth wall so hard. You, you realize you're standing upon a ley line overflowing with magical energy. You may immediately write any number in a square in the room of the encounter following normal placement rules. Well, that is pretty good. Um, well, you know what? We could just get a key with that, couldn't we? Because I should have said, um, so if I place a 2 here, for example, or maybe I should place like a 5 here, or a 4, because then I'll be able to place lower numbers here. Yeah, okay, so if I place a 4, 
four. Then I've got room for a five up here if I really need to. Again, the total for this room is 30. Um, oh, but following normal placement rules. So I should say that one of the rules is you can only place numbers adjacent to one another. So I, actually, I, I couldn't skip a space and come place it over here. So I would have to either go here or here. Um, well, I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to place a five right here. And that way, it's the highest it can be. So we can place pretty much... We've got more options for this square. And... I can start working on this corridor. So if I roll a double, for example, I might be willing to sacrifice it and uh, to not roll a monster, but actually to put two in here. Okay, tactical. There we go. So again, like, I could check off a basilisk for double three, or I could just make these threes. Um, if it wasn't obvious as well, the corridors don't follow the same placement rules as the rooms. So, like, obviously I've done one, two, three, but then I've done two, three, five, and that, that's okay. It's not in the same... It's not in the same room. I think I will go with threes here. So three, three, and I've got a five to place, which actually isn't that good, is it? Um, ooh, actually that's not very good at all. Well, I can place it here. That would give me one, two, three, four, five, six... 12. Oof, that's giving me 17, so I can't make any more mistakes there. I can place one more one, like there, and that room's done. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna feel a bit nervous about that, but we're, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna go with it. I've got a three, so that's brilliant, and I've got another double one. Wow, that is a nice roll. So three there to finish the corridor, and then I've got a double one. I can't place them in this room. I could. 16, 17. If I place the one in here, I would be able to get an extra point. <laughs> I mean, it's not that's not amazing, but you know, I mean, why not? Um, or is it worth getting the plague rat? And this is like a it is a constant equipment, so like it's not like just a special use thing. So when I roll doubles, I may re-roll one of the die before writing numbers. Or do I want to get a point here? Just a single point, and then maybe put a one over here, for example. Oh, I should oh, I should also circle this key to show that I've used it. Um, forgot about that. So we've placed our three. I could place this and this, and it would set us in pretty decent stead. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to skip the double. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm going to skip the double. I'm going to put a one in there and a one here. Boop. It means that this square is done, and actually this room is done, but it is 18. So I'm going to try and like maybe remind myself of that by doing like, I don't know, like that. <laughs> nine, five, yeah, nine, 18, perfect. Okay, next roll. Where did that come from? I think that bounced off the top of the castle there. Very strange. All right, we've got another one, which is not good because I cannot do anything with it. Um. Yeah, I literally cannot do anything there. That is a real shame. And a six is also terrible. Um, because I can't place it anywhere. I'm quite tempted just to re-roll those. I might put a two, like, here. I might put a two there, and then just re-roll these two. Ooh, I'm a bit nervous about this, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to re-roll. So I'm going to put a two here so I can, I'm can. i ready to get this key. I'm going to try and skip this key. I don't want to I don't want to go there. It's just annoying. It's too far away. And I'm going to re-roll these. And we've got a two and a five, and that is fine. Because these need to be in descending order, I think. Hang on. Numbers must be placed in descending order. So this can be a five something something whatever so if I put a, oh I've got a double two though helm of cognizance when you roll all even numbers you may subtract one to a roll die I think I'm just gonna go with the luck here no hold on <laughs> um, hang on hang on hang on I could go two five like that and then I could do I could technically do two up here Although that's, that doesn't really strike me as a great idea, because then I wouldn't be able to place anything here if I really needed to. Or I could take on the giant scorpion and just place a 5 somewhere, but then... Where would I place a 5? 
Now I replace a five here. Yeah, okay. Replace a five here, and I'm going to check off this giant scorpion encounter. So that's done. I'm actually doing pretty well on doubles. I just need to finish one off. Um, but I've, I've bailed out on them a couple of times now, haven't I? All right. Um, so now we've got another key. So shade that in. Why does it keep coming out the side? Just fired off over there. It's actually it was actually a one, but I'm going to roll it again. Um, oh, and we get a double four. So there you go. Um, well, actually, that's not terrible, is it? Because we could do this six four four, and then we'd have access to this corridor, and we'd have access to. Oh, hang on. Do we need that other key? Wait, how many key? We've got one, two. We gained a third, and now we've got two more. So if we don't want to get this, we have to go through here. Hmm, annoying. I suppose I could do this too, like, boop. Or I could do this, four, six, four. Or I could do this, and those aren't the same, six and four, another another learning opportunity. Um, six and four are not the same, so they would be able to go in that corridor. Or I could do kind of half and half. No, I feel like I like the six here more. Because any three numbers can be any three numbers can be different. I'm gonna do this. Four four six. I mean this is very large. I mean it's actually it 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 disables me from getting up here. But frankly, that's okay. Now I can fit a three here if I really need to. Um and then nothing else really. Um, I know, how am I doing on this? Uh, this is a 30 total, so this is 10, 16, 23. So I've only got seven more to put in here. Let's mark this. I'm going to mark this as open because that's going to, that actually helps, yeah. Okay, and I guess I'll mark this as open too so I can start through this corridor. Four, four, and a three. Well, that couldn't have gone any worse because that's literally, those are the same. However, I could do... Well, I need to go up here. I need to go up there. So I'm going to go six, four, four, three, and hope that I don't roll a four or a three next turn. So four is not equal to three, and four is less than six. And we've got a four, five, and a four. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Okay, we're going to do this five here, and we're going to check off that. We're going. To, we are going to check this. I don't think I'm ever going to get this goblin goblin cut purse but thankfully it does save me for having to place two more fours now i'm through here so i've used this i'm in this room now and these rooms are interesting because we have to place a number here and here to get through the staircase it doesn't have to be the same number it doesn't say just the number but this entire room is uh, or this entire section and this section are added together to get a total of 42 so we don't want to get a total of 42 this is a total of nine, um, but we're not there yet because we need this key. Basically, I need three nice numbers that are going to fit here. That that is a nice number that'll fit there. Actually, those those are lovely numbers that'll fit there. Two, three, four, just like that. And we've got ourselves two, three, four. Another key, the final one, in fact. Um, yeah. All right, pretty decent. Um, now we're going to go head left, I think, and maybe down here too. We can be in, we're like a Schrodinger's dungeon. But we can be in two places at once. We're like a party, obviously. Um, three isn't a great roll. No, three is a good roll. Three is here. And we are opening this. Three is a great roll. What are you talking about? And then I can either go one here and one. Hmm. There's no... I could place a one there, but it's not the best. I think I will take the encounter for this one. Or the the double, I should say. So place three here, open that. Right, is that what I just did? Yes. And now we've met a plague rat. So when we roll doubles, we can re-roll any one of the dice before writing the numbers. Lovely. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to give it myself that if I do roll a double, say I rolled another double three, I guess... Um, I would check off the basilisk and then roll. I think that's how I'm going to play it. Um, again, it's not super clear, but I think that's how I'm going to do it. Another double. Okay, well, they and it was a double three. Um, okay, promise that was not planned. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is actually do this. Two, 
oops, sorry, three, two, three up here. That give me a total of 12 in this room, but it's, it'll place it. And then I, I've got a easy route to this chest, haven't I? Um, so three, two. Oh, I suppose I could even place the three here and just get it right away. That's actually a much better idea, yes. Um, it won't allow me to get the added bonus point for this room, but honestly, I don't really care. It's only a point. Although, actually, you get the amount of points for the treasure that is actually on written on the treasure. So I should actually try and write a higher number on the treasure because that'll get me more points. Three, two, three, and I've got a, I've got a random encounter. So it's three plus two, which is five. And that is the Dichotomous Doppelganger. You see a shadowy form across the room with piercing red eyes. It appears to be mimicking your every move, perhaps as a way to use this to your advantage. Gain another use of the two power. Oh, yes! Um, that's brilliant, because we get to use some more special abilities. And I kind of forgot about them for a while there. I probably could have done a better job with that. Um, now then, we've used all of our keys, but we don't need any more. And we've placed all of our numbers, which don't need any more of those. Oh, but wait, the, the absolute maximum I can get on this is four now. Because I already wrote five in there, and it's a nine maximum. Uh, that's uh, that, that's a bit of a mistake, I think, on my part. Because I probably should have just... I probably should have just, like, cut my losses and, and took, the, uh, took the three. Well, if I roll a four, I'm going to have to remember to do that now. Um, and that is the worst roll I could have possibly come up with because that is unplaceable. Um, I could place a six here, but it makes it very difficult to place anything else. And I suppose I could do this um, because this room is a twenty-four total, and so that's not—that's actually not bad, is it? Okay, I'll do that. This is a bit anxiety-provoking, but it's okay. One, two, three, that's lovely. And a six on a random encounter, so we've got one more. And it's a two, that moves us up to eight. As you attempt to take a step into the room, you curiously find yourself unable to do so, dungeon slime. As you gaze downward towards your boot, you see a translucent green slime slowly crawling up your leg. Next turn, you can only place numbers in this room. Ouch. Um, well, okay, hopefully we get a nice roll then. Um... We've got a five, a one, and a one, and you know what? That is, that's chill for me because oh, oh, hang on, I can re-roll one of the numbers before writing it. Yes, yes, I can. Oh, hang on, do I want to? Because I could do one, fuck, no, one. Oh no, I can't. Sorry, I was thinking I could maybe fit them all in, but I can't. Is it? No, 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 no. But I could, if I do one five, put anything else above it, theoretically. Oh, that's a perfect roll. You absolute beauty. So we've got one five. Oh, and then I can place it here, can't? I? No, I can't. wait. Can I? No. I think I think these follow separate placement rules. Separate for placement, but you total them. You total the value, but they're separate for placement, so I can place a 6 here. What total does that give me? 10, 21, 26. We need to get to 42 or lower, so that's 16 more. Yeah, okay. Easy peasy. 6 up here, and that's... I'm not sure you can see that at all, but this is a 5 and this is a 6, and that's actually worked out pretty well. Another double, and it's a double 3. Um, again, it's I don't want to place because I could do this, couldn't I, and do three one, but I don't want to place a one on the treasure because that's a rubbish score. This is twenty three, and we want to get to thirty. No, oh, I could actually do it if I did. Oh no, I can't. Nope. Ignore exact everything I'm saying. Just ignore it. Um, I could do it this way, and then but I need to place a one, and so that would be not good. Shall I place a three on this treasure just to call it good? I mean, the best I can get on this is a 4, isn't it? So if I got a 5 and a 4, but that would be 9, 15, 20, 21, 31, 41. Oof, okay. That doesn't leave much room for error. 
Or should I just take the double? Place a one here. I'll just take the double. I'll take the double basilisk. Um, not there yet, but you know, whatever. And then I'm going to place a one on this random encounter. It's a risk because it could be a bad random encounter, but it also could be good. So let's just see. So one plus one is two and I am poisoned. <laughs> As you bend down to inscribe the numeric griff, glyph, bleh, to inscribe the numeric glyph on a tile, a venomous snake suddenly springs from a hole and bites your arm. The acrid poison inflames your veins, causing acute pain. Modify your dice rolls by one, nine minus one, I should say, on the next turn. Hopefully, we roll a six and a five, and Bob, Bob's your uncle. That has that is unbelievable. I've. This has only started happening every uh, like relatively recently, but I've started calling my dice rolls, and I, I'm a bit I'm a bit nervous that someone is watching. So we've got a six, which modifies into a five, and we've got a five that modifies into a four. That means, I believe now, that I've got ten, sixteen, twenty-one, twenty-two, thirty-two. 42. No, I've done it. 42. I've got 40. That roll has given me four points here and a point for the room because I've literally got 42. And now I've got to place a two somewhere, but that shouldn't be too hard, should it? Uh, I can place it here. I can place a two here. Oh, but that would mean I'd have to put a one in the treasure. Okay, so maybe it's not as good. Oh, I could place a two here? No, because that's also not good. I can't place a two here. I can't place a two here. I can place two here. Two. Two. Two to two, two, two. Now I need to roll a four, and that's it. Um, oh, wait, hang on. Why don't I just... Why don't I just... I could just end the game. I'm just going to end the game. Look, I can do this. Boop. Make this into a three, sorry you, and put it here and just get three points. And then I'm done. That's it. Game over. And I don't have to risk the next roll having to put something in like mess up my totals. Yeah. All right. I think that's the best way to do it. I've got three points here, four points there. And let's see how we do final scoring. After the final treasure chest has been collected. Oops, you can't really see that. That's okay. Um... Score points equal to the value written on each treasure chest. If you manage to write numbers in a room whose sum equals that room's number, you score one point for each square. Oh, wow. One point for each square filled out in the room, not for each room. Okay, well, that's much better. Um, all right. Well, then, let's see. We've got three. We've got three in this room. And we've scored eight, so that's not nine. Uh, we've got four in this room. Um, and we've scored 42, so that's plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 points. Um, we've scored 18 in this room, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points, plus 6. And then score 1 point for each monster box crossed out. I think that's... hang on. I'm not... okay, I'm a bit unclear, but I think this is the monster box, not each one of these. I could be wrong on that, but it says... It says on the wandering monster page, cross out a box next to a monster whose value equals cross out a box next to a monster whose value equals a doubles roll. When all of the boxes next to a monster have been claim have been filled, claim their equipment by checking the box next to its description. Each monster box crossed out is worth one point at the end of the game. I'm not sure if it's this is a monster box or this. Maybe it is this, because this is the box with the monster in it. This is the equipment box. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for monsters. Um, I need to be keeping a tally somewhere. Okay, let's go up here. Seven for monsters. Uh, three, four for treasure. And 17 so far for rooms. I'll make this a T rather than a cross. And then... What else? Um, final scoring. Uh, subtract one point for each skull. <laughs> well, let me tell. Boop. Let me tell you, I didn't get any skulls this turn, so that is a pretty decent game, I would say. Seventeen plus three is twenty. Plus four is twenty-four. Plus seven is thirty-one. A perfect score is fifty-two, and it says. A score greater or equal to twenty six is half decent. So uh, that was my that was my that was my word. They didn't say half decent, but a score of twenty six is about 
is about where you want to be. So 31, I feel it's pretty decent, pretty good. That's it. That's Dungeons and Numera. I, I really like this game, actually. It's it's nice and puzzly and thinky, and you wouldn't expect that from a single-page dice game. Um, it's got enough rules to make it interesting. I think the wandering monsters and the random encounters are actually, like, pretty well done. I was a bit annoyed. <laughs> First, I was like, oh, I just print this, print this page out. That's great. And I was like, oh, wait, there's two more pages, so it's not really a single-page print. But... To be quite honest, I do think they add enough to the game to make it interesting. I'm, I don't, I can't see you getting more than one of these necessarily. Although I did waste a lot of doubles filling in rooms, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's not true. Maybe you do get a lot of those um, on other types of games. But uh, the the extra key really helps us out, didn't it? And no skulls. I can't believe we got away with that. Wow. Well. And that is going to be it from me. If you want to see more PNP, um, stick around because there's plenty more to come. Plenty more that I'm mopping up from the contest. And the new ones are coming out all the time anyway as well. So we're going to start covering those more on the channel again. Um, I was along with the other, you know, along with the other regular tabletop board games with actual boxes and stuff. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, do consider subscribing. It would be lovely to have you. Um, drop a like if you like. That is going to be it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. Do give this a try. I'll leave the link in the description to the files. Um, well worth your time and dice rolls. That will be it from me. I've already said that like three times. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.